So, a privilege to be here tonight in Park City. A privilege to be participating in this amazing endeavor for the Kimball Arts Center. And somebody asked me out in the lobby what drew me to this. And quite frankly, in the initial material, the idea this is a center, not a museum. This is a living place. It's about exhibition, it's about education, and it's about events. It's about community. And I really am driven to the idea of working as an architect It's the ultimate commission. So thank you for having me here. First biography. On the screen, a small, a small house, about like the miners' shacks here. That's 845 square feet, of which part was a studio. Four weeks of construction, $10,000 of budget on 14 acres of desert on the edge of Phoenix. Post Rome, a Rome prize when I was 40 years old, which was a few years ago. And this is what job number 317 looked like. That's the Phoenix Central Library, the building that still is fairly iconic and uh, a presence at a point of pride for my community. And again, going far, a competition won in Dubai for an iconic towers complex. How can you do towers that would be iconic when they have the world's tallest building? So for us, it became about zero carbon. It became about social change. It became about a whole idea of the culture and the place and celebration. We won the competition. And then, unfortunately, we said goodbye to Dubai because they were just a body image, and that's not what we're about. This is the philosophy. Philosophy of architecture, that's the balance between pragmatism and poetry. Again, balance. Something that's just pragmatism, it might keep out the rain, it might keep that ice dam from, from happening, but it's really not what raises the hair on the back of your neck. Too much poetry, that's great for museums. When you balance the two, that's just not art, that's called architecture. It's about the idea of celebrating people, celebrating place, celebrating materials and craft, and light and choreographing these things. A mason as inspiration for a great library in the sixth largest city in America. Seven acres of building, a building again completed 16 years ago that we've been involved with ever since. It is a building which was $90 a square foot. So budget is always a challenge that drives you to better. It was one of the greatest buildings done. It was virtually completed a decade before it leads with an acronym. We have the sales on the north side, we have the transparency on the main street of our city. It's a place where we have a great reading room in the sky, and again, the roof floats on light, and it's a public room, and in that previous slide, all those people that were sort of looking up at the sky, you might wonder what that was about. That was the annual solstice celebration, where at solar noon on the first day of summer, we come to this room, and through those skylights floating above the columns, a small dot of light puts a dagger of light on each column and it lights like a birthday column, cake. And we know not only where we are in our city and our region, but we where we are in the universe and that we do revolve around the sun and light is the truth. A recent branch library, about the same size as your building, 28,000 square feet, inspired by the false fronts of the west and the driving through theaters that are now in ruins. This scrim, if you will, was a way to find a site behind the poppet, the, the pump yourself gas station, the blimpies, the cameras, Sanders, and behind the Safeway loading dock. This is a regional library. It's 28,000 square feet. And again, a celebration of materials. I believe in the passage that the ordinary becomes the extraordinary. I'm always looking for the magic and those simple things that can reach beyond. And that's a lot of what the Courage of your town, your city has always been about as we wander and look at the architecture of Main Street and the, the hills around us here. I've been places where it does snow and it is icy. I come originally from the Midwest. This is two buildings in Jackson, Wyoming, the Riddell Advertising Building and the iconic Mad River Museum and White Raf Water Rafting Departure Center, a little mixed use building in that, that community. My only formal training is a sculptor. I received my license in 1974. I have a partnership with three gentlemen. Rob Gaspard is with me in the audience today. And we have a staff of 34 that work in Phoenix. Remodel is not something new to me. This is the old Fiveplex UA Cinema, actually built in 1976, the same day as, uh, and North that so just now, the Kimball Art Center was first made into its manifestation from a gas station to an art, art museum. So this went from a 1976 theater in 1998 into a contemporary art venue. 
You can see the choreography in the plan, the five theaters, a wonderful sculptural scrim by James Carpenter, the forms relating to the context surrounding, and this one sweep of a wall that you see going from Dale Chihuly here unifying the idea of what used to be just five dark cinemas. And this is the courtyard, and outdoor space and gardens are something that we know well. This is Reno, the biggest little city in America. We had the privilege at the beginning of this century to do the Nevada Museum of Art, inspired by the Black Rock Desert and the neon of the Strip. This black anthracite clad building, a good neighbor to the old, a new neighbor to that old. Two forms of clapboard, one anthracite in a slightly different way, forming a bond in this community. On the right, again, the benefits of, of the gift of the reflections off the developer office building next door. The inexpensive class was all concave, and I was, I would have to say, not aware this was going to happen, but happily surprised when the scaffold came down and these wonderful circles of light climbed the building every day. Again, the courtyard museums are about the art, not the object. It's about choreographing space and light and the betterment of art. This is a full education area. We have our 200 seat theater. Again, these places are about people, and the circulation is the whole generator for every place in the building, not unlike the Kimball Art Center is about art and the involvement, constantly kinetic, constantly alive and engaged. And this is what a rooftop looks like. This is the entire roof of this building. This is right after the Art Environment Conference a couple weeks ago. And these are where weddings happen and discussions happen and social gatherings happen and good music and maybe a little love and romance occasionally. But what is it that influences me? I'm influenced by listening because that's the power of every project. So in this, we have the history to listen to, from when it was a barn, to a service station, to a museum. We're starting to think and analyze those are the past of the sun, at the winter solstice, which is a couple weeks away, as well as the summer solstice, that path of the south sun. The wonderful access, the prime location of this building, north is up. And you know your town, but we're going to discover it really well and listen really hard. We're already diagnosing the understanding graphically and to scale your program. This is what it looks like, and it's amazing energy. Exhibition, education, events, this whole synergy. We take this puzzle, and if we do our job right and listen really well and listen to what we heard today and in the context of the place, we're going to come out of this thing and you're going to see design that is a reflection of you, and that is our goal always. And this place will never be the same because of the commitment of your citizens and this, this amazing endeavor. So it's a real privilege to be here tonight. I hope this gives you a little sense of who Wilbur Plus Partners is. Thank you very much.